Thank you for tuning in this Wednesday morning, November 1st, 2023. I'm John Paul Flame, joined by Eric Pickle. Good morning. Johnny Cakes Auville's here. Oh, hello, everyone. And Jason Bishop. Chilly one today with gusty winds. Mm. Gusty winds. Hope you're not planning on playing some golf today. It's not going to be a great day. Last night or yesterday, there were trade wins, and we'll be talking about it throughout the show. Mm -hmm. We also got Spencer Carberry, the Caps coach, is going to join us at 7 o'clock. Three straight wins. Love it. Uh, Diana Rossini is going to join us from the Athletic NFL Insider. She was reporting yesterday that this was not at the hands of the coaches or the GMs. It was at the hands of the ownership. And that's what we had been speculating about for days. Yeah, well, you called that. Ben Standing joins us. He also is from the Athletic. He'll join us at 9. But, yeah, yesterday, I don't know. I expected at least one of the deals. I know that after the game on Sunday, I tweeted out, trade them all because the defense was ranked 29th and you were 3-5. and five. Why mm-hmm. keep them? Including mm-hmm. the coach, but we know that's not happening right now. Right. Um, Raiders said 3-5 and five was enough and <laughs> yeah. a season and a half they was said, enough ball, ball. of Josh McDaniels. And the GM. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but – with Washington, this is huge. Two first-round picks, two anchors of the defensive line, edge defenders, Montez Sweat and Chase Young, both gone. I fully expected Montez to be on the move because we had heard kind of concrete rumors about what the compensation was going to be. It sounded like he was going to go to the Falcons, wound up going to the Bears instead. That was a bit of a curveball. I did not expect both Montez mm-hmm. and Chase Young to be dealt. That that well, just shows it's a massive overhaul, that things aren't working, and that's that you're also, starting over. And that's also how you know it wasn't Rivera's call right. because I mean, we, your we your defense that. got worse. We knew that coming in. And if you're trying to make the playoffs, why are you eliminating two starters? Right. So, yeah, I mean, it's um, I don't know. It, it's I guess it's Josh Harris's move, his stamp on I'm in charge, and this, this right. is a, a rebuilding move. I guess, yeah, but I guess he went in and said, I don't care what sort of deal you sign with Dan Snyder. I'm going to make moves for the organization. Yeah. We're, we're going to move forward no matter what. You know, We're not going to let you, who's botched the roster basically at every turn, have any more personnel. Well, set. at least what Kime and others have reported is that Ron and the staff, <laughs> and maybe just to kiss up to their owners, they, they were on board with it. Right. That they actually looked at the data, and we talked about it, that when Chase and Montez weren't there, for mm-hmm. whatever reason, the defense statistically, actually in a lot of metrics, played right. better. They're not expecting, and this was a quote yesterday. I think Standing had it. They're not expecting a big drop-off. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I would and disagree You also with saw that. The, the line addition by subtraction. Yes. That was thrown out, too. Yeah. That's spin. I, I, Look, it was I a disagree. good move. Let, let, let's just get yeah. to it. It was a good move by new ownership. Mm -hmm. You have two guys whose contracts are expiring. You now are retooling, rebuilding, however you want to phrase it. This is all about the future. Josh Harris, Magic Johnson, all of them, they want to build a championship team. They're not going to be able to pay those guys. The juice wasn't worth the squeeze. Get something for them. Now they have five draft picks potentially in the top 50. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's all about the future. Especially so I applaud it. No, we I think wonder it's both, whether though, JP. I think it's both. We, I think they actually think that it's not going to be a significant drop off, and they're getting these values. Kimes basically insinuated. I listened to him this morning. They would have taken less for Chase. They basically yeah, get chased fine. away for nothing. Mm. And the Montez thing, they weren't necessarily thrilled to get rid of him, but it, the compensation was the value too, too great. Good. But, the yeah. Bears but, see, but this, this year doesn't high. matter. It doesn't matter to Josh Harris. Right. You can say that they're better. That's irrelevant. This is the stamp of Josh Harris I'm and the ownership saying, saying big we're in charge. Ron is gone. He's dead man walking. We knew we knew that all season long. We 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 said probably the only reason he still has his job is because Josh Harris became owner too late in the ball game. Mm-hmm. All right? The only chance was for Ron Rivera to have some great season. They're not having a great season. They're three and five. They've been spiraling. They've lost five of their last six games. Mm-hmm. I think what they did was necessary, mm-hmm. and it was the best move for the organization moving forward. I don't know the inner workings. They hired some analytics guy. I, I don't both. know. I don't know how it worked. You know, we speculated it speculated whether somebody gives him a piece of paper and he goes, okay, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, But clearly it's about 
draft picks. Mm -hmm. And that's what he did with the 76ers. I'm not saying it's worked out with the 76ers. A lot of people trash the process. But (laughs) his process there was draft picks. And from what I've read with the New Jersey Devils, his process was young talent. Right. So they're going to go in with draft picks and young and try and retool well, the team. That is that is true, and I would disagree with anybody who says that they're going to be a better defense without Sweat but here's and, why. and Young. Because at the very least, you're losing big-time depth because if something happens to Tuhill or if something happens to who, who's Smith, Williams. Smith Williams, Williams yeah. all right, then K.J. Henry's playing. Right. All right, so or then you, you're signing street free. You can tell me types. all you want that you're not going to see a drop off. There's no way Two Hill and Smith Williams are going to make the plays over the next seven to ten. Or how many games are left? Uh, nine. Now here's the difference, JP, the, Jason. They're they play the system better. I'm sorry, the they're the just not as talented want. individually. They're not as talented. Yeah. So I think but there's going to be a drop off. They play the system better, and I think yeah, that's fine. So you you argue with that, but their point is. <laughs> And, I, and this was a revelation to me, but again, Kime is reporting this morning that the whole do your job sign, that was directed at the defensive line, mm. specifically. Do your job. You guys are still freelancing too much, and it wasn't just Chase. Mm-hmm. Do your job. And if you look at the numbers, the numbers are what they are. When they played together as a team, and then they did some other things because they didn't necessarily think, oh, we can win with the front four by themselves. You know, we need to help because they're not as talented. They actually played better defense. They, yeah, bl- I, they blitz other guys. You can tell me all the analytics you want. I'm just, you know, those guys just aren't as good individually, and you're going to have a little bit well, of a drop Well, they'll have to off. prove it this weekend against the Patriots, a team yep. that's under-talented on offense. I, <laughs> I hope that those guys that step in, that step into the void created by these trades, that those guys actually make some plays. And this is a team to do it against expect yeah. where they can't to. score a lot of points. I actually expect them to. I think I you'll see some do. plays. I hope that's right. I think you'll see some plays. If they were better without those guys, why were they starting them? Because they paid a head coach, so much money. They had a to- head coach can decide who he's starting. If other guys are better, I don't buy it. I'm with Jason. They're not Look, better I don't players. think Chase Young. Look at the numbers. Chase Young never even came close to living up to the hype. But if you want to look at the numbers – Take a look at Chase Young's numbers in the NFL. Look at his pass uh, rush rate. Look at how many times he was winning. We were disappointed with his impact, but the 49ers got a guy with some major talent who can potentially wreak havoc. Well, let's see. Let's see if it, if it continues. Well, he couldn't be in a more perfect situation. Yeah, playing with his college teammate. Well, playing with a beast. Like, yeah. He's not the number one. Like you can always, Everybody said, oh, they got to count for Chase. Yeah. But they don't have to count for him as much as they have to count for Bosa. That's true. We'll see, we'll see what sort of motor he brings to San Francisco. Because if it's anything like those clips that we saw out of the Philadelphia game, where he clearly was not giving 100% effort on every play. Mm-hmm. Correct. Like, hope, maybe the change of scenery will be good for him, where Nick Bosa is going to be like, hey, man, I saw that tape of you against Philly. That That's not going to fly here. Because if you do that here, you're going to be benched. Yeah. All that you said, play like let's... I play – out here, it's gonna or be, you're going to be sitting on the pod. All that it's, said, it's just so ironic that he's going to the team that yeah. I'm pulling for. <laughs> right. Yeah, you're a cha- you know what? You need to get a Chase Young jersey, uh, no, Niners well, jersey. I mean, I hope he plays out, plays well, and balls out. I really mm-hmm. do. Sure. Uh, I, I mean, everyone has their questions, but uh, maybe the change of scenery is, JP, is a good. Help. I just yeah. think it's a win, 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 win. That's what I'm saying. Obviously, it's about acquiring assets and building for the future. There's no question about it. Okay, you didn't but, think there were going to be trades. I didn't think so either. I said yesterday there would be. I said, oh, yes, okay, that was flip, but originally you well, said you don't think there was going to be trades. Yeah, well, I listened to Ron. Yeah. Ron said we're going to be trades. Be- before, before, I heard Re- before I heard Rivera's comments, I didn't think there I mean, would be. Ron threw because down I all... didn't think Josh Harris was going to go. Yeah. All right, well, this is my did. show. He did. He did. Yesterday I didn't was think that, that was going to happen it, this it, early. It, it's not about getting better this season, EB. No, no. There was no part of that decision making that was about getting better this season. No, I'm telling you it's a side benefit. Potentially. Yeah. Potentially, I'll. I think they'll get better because they play the Patriots. I mean, I. I, I I'll tell you what. I think every offense is relieved they don't have to game plan against Montez Sweat and Chase Young. Maybe, but I think Jack Del Rio might be relieved that he's got guys that will actually run a system. Maybe, mm. but Chase Young, this season, this season, and I agree with you, Cakes. When you watch the video, especially the last game, it's embarrassing it's for damning. Chase Young. The it's effort really bad. is horrific, but still, somehow his pass rush win rate. Was twenty five percent this year? I know, but they basically and still, traded him for nothing. They would have gotten a compensatory yeah, pick anyway. Third anyway yeah. Still they this got him season, for free, basically. They got still him for free. this season, Chase Young had twenty five pressures, eighth in the NFL. Whatever. 
He wasn't having a great year. I he am. was having a great year. But you're going to miss that. The team, I believe, was sixth combined We're not miss it. in We're the NFL in, in the sacks. League in defense. We're 25 not miss sacks. It. I agree. The difference between 29th and, be and, and 32nd. Well, we of course, it can be worse. You can drop from 29th to 32nd. I'm going to bet I'm going to bet you we finish higher at the end of the year than we are right now without those guys. Take the bet. It won't be much. I got to look at the schedule. The schedule's brutal. They played the Eagles twice. Doesn't matter. Eagles offense puts up All a right, ton of points. But they still like play statistics. Dallas twice. They still yeah. play Doesn't the Dolphins. They play San Francisco. Better. They They'll play Seattle. better defensively. They'll play better as a team. Chase Young was 5th in the NFL in pass rush win rate. And it got him 30th in the NFL. Yeah, secondary stinks. He was freelancing. All right, but all right, we can argue about this all day long. Um, but the fact that they got a second and a third, and Josh Harris is saying, all right, don't really care about this year. Right. Correct. All right, even though Ron Rivera and the players and Sam Howell and, you know, obviously John Allen, they think they can still make the playoffs this year. Um, I question whether these moves are going to help them this year. I, I don't think they will. I don't think that was the goal. I think it was a side benefit. Yeah. But Harris had it. He could probably couldn't believe what was happening when the Bears were like, yeah, we'll give you our second round pick, which will probably be like a top the 35, four, the 40th pick at worst yeah. in the upcoming NFL draft. Could be. I could mean, at worst. He, he couldn't have gotten that paperwork done quickly enough or agreed in principle on sending sweat to the Bears because, I mean, that's, I think that's tremendous value for a guy that you have no designs of, of paying in the future. Yeah. If this second was, rounder back, an early one. Listen, if this was a, I, the picture you're trying to paint is that this is a blow the whole team up. If this was the blow the whole team up, they would have traded a lot more guys. No, these guys had expiring contracts. Yeah, and it is yeah. about tra- like acquiring draft picks. I don't think it's about blowing the whole team up. I think it's about getting rid of some malcontents and some guys. You can't that, really blow. It's hard to blow up a, an NFL team. Like they didn't. Trade, it's not they, the NBA. They 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 didn't they didn't trade anybody on the offense Mm-mm. that they could have. <laughs> Now, my understanding is they didn't get value for Gibby. They didn't get value for Samuel that they that they wanted. So maybe those guys would have been on the move. Mm-hmm. But if this was a true blow-up, there's a lot of guys they could have got. No, it wasn't. It wasn't a true blow-up. But as far as NFL trades go, it was a pretty it, two pretty seismic moves. Yeah, I mean, sure. there was only two there was only like six picks. trades in the NFL. They were a third of them. No, for sure. I think there were 15 for the actual. Oh, it ended up being 15, but six yeah. big ones, really. Yeah. Well, maybe six yesterday, but I think there were yeah. 15 total. All right. If you want to chime in, we'll open up the phone lines. Your reaction, both Montez Sweat and Chase Young traded away yesterday. What does this mean to you as a commander's fan? What does it mean to the commanders moving forward? 800 636 1067. You can call us in the MGM National Harbor listener lines. As I mentioned, we got Coach Carberry from the Washington Capitals at 7 o'clock. They've won three in a row. Diana Rossini, who can talk about the inner workings of these deals and what how much ownership was involved, she'll join us at 820. And Ben, Sten, ben Standing, who covers the Commanders for the Athletic, he'll jump on at 9. That's all right here on the Junkies. And now Chase Young, the former number two overall pick, goes to the San Francisco 49ers in exchange for a third-round draft pick, a much more likely destination, the 49ers, Defense really struggled the last couple weeks under Steve Wilkes. Beef up their defensive line. Give them someone on the opposite side from Nick Bosa. And, you know, if you're the 49ers, you have aspirations to go deep, deep into the playoffs. The best way to do it is to stop the other team's quarterback from doing what he does. Adding Chase Young to the mix, certainly someone who could do that as talented as anyone. He is in the last year of his deal, so likely going to need a contract extension at some point. All of that goes into the price, but I think the main thing for the 49ers this year is that they just got a lot better on defense with a premium talent off the edge. Welcome back. Talking about what went down yesterday before the trade deadline. Montez Sweat gets dealt to Chicago, second-round pick. Chase Young gets shipped to San Francisco for a third-round pick. I'm going to put it up as the junkies' poll of the day. Do you support the moves? Our Junkies Poll of the Day presented by Van Meter Homes. Jason and I were kind of kicking around what that Eagles game meant. And we're just speculating to both Chase Young and Montez. What This was my opinion, but I tweeted this out right after the game. I said, defense continues to be all reputation, no results, 38 points. Trade Montez, trade Chase, load up on picks for the next coach. 
and that is what Josh Harris and the ownership group has done. They are loading up on draft picks. It's the NFL. It's not the NBA. Like the NBA, do you realize that the Clippers, as they've gone all in the last couple of years, they don't have draft picks like until like 2030. Right. They, don't they, care. they trade don't. away first Steve round Ballmer picks like care. candy. He wants to win now. Like for Paul George, for right. James Harden. In the NFL, you can't do it as no. much. No. You know, with the deal, it's a if, different you, league. if you have a mega deal, you might be able to get like one first round pick, potentially two if you trade like the top pick in the draft. But this was, I think, a pretty good haul to get a second round pick, which is going to be high. Cakes points it out. It's the Bears. I mean, the Bears have two wins. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they're probably going to lose again this week. They play the Saints. I mean, it I could be, be the Saints. It right. could be the top pick of the second round. Certainly could. Uh, That's great value. Well, and then they get a third round pick for Chase. Who, let's be honest, second year, completely disappointing, got injured. Last year, basically an injury year. This year has shown some flashes. Look, some statistics are very favorable for Chase Young. Um, Ranked fifth in pass rush win rate amongst defensive linemen in the NFL. Five out of 55, I believe. It's pretty good. Yeah, I know. And then you look at other lists, and he's way down. I, I don't know. I, mean, I kind of just got to just it's an eye test for me watching him going forward with San Francisco. But it does make you wonder and question if they would have pulled out that win over the Eagles and held that lead, would they have made these deals? Now maybe they do with Sweat because the deal was so good, and you're getting the top, you know, maybe a top thirty-five to forty pick for him. But um, you know, if you beat the Eagles, you're four and four. You're not three and five, and you, you know you, you're still thinking legitimate playoff chances. So it would have been interesting to see what would have happened. But that didn't. And going forward, Josh Harris said, no, we got to build for the future. Hmm. I hope this Josh Harris works out, man, because we are giving him <laughs> a lot of credit. Like, he is a guy. <laughs> I mean, we're giving him a lot of credit. No, I just think he did something that he should have done. Mm-hmm. And he's also stepping in for a super low bar, like after Dan Snyder. Like, Definitely. I mean, he's he's going to get a big time honeymoon. No, here's, but here's the question: If Josh Harris fires everybody on the staff except Bienemy and says Bienemy, you're our guy, I would you're, question you're, that. You're the head coach. I would question that. I would have. I would, a, too. I would have an issue with that. I would too. Because so far, I don't think he deserves it. Yeah. Or he, is he going to just clear out the entire staff, bring in his own GM, and then go out and look for a coach? You know, I would think, I would assume what he'll bring would in a GM that that will cast a pretty yeah. wide net for whoever is going to be the next head coach. But I'm almost in Washington. Do you think that do you think that Josh Harris could say, "All right, John Smith, the new GM, you can find everybody else, but Bianami is my guy." Do you think Josh Harris would do that? Maybe, but I would guess he would probably lean on the people that he's going to put in place to make those decisions. Right, right. Somebody we know said if they fired Jack. Or if they fired Ron, Jack would walk. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, and that would be interesting. That would be like a complete a And then it, apparently show. they don't feel like they have a like a, a, a competent like guy like necessarily experience yeah. to run the defense. I, I, again, I don't think they're three and five. Yeah. Got, the season has gone sideways. Like that's if if you wanted to clear everybody out, if you fire Ron, then Jack walks. Then. You, elevate, do. you uh, elevate the next guy. Right. Whoever the next guy in line is, you take over for the next four or five All right, games. But then you clearly are giving up on the season. I think the yeah. enemy's yeah. best shot, though, is for that scenario to play out. Yeah. To I get think... a trial run and like a freebie and a lost season and, and show something. I think it's going to happen now. I, I'm going to predict. So you think the right Patriots now, win? They're three and I six. I think they're going to lose to the Patriots. Season over. Potentially, they fire Ron. But I think they're going to lose to the Patriots on the road. And then they're going to lose to Seattle on the road. And I just don't see Ron still being in charge after that. I mean, he's clearly not in charge anymore. He's not in charge. Yesterday, stamped everything. It's not a coach-centric approach anymore, which was Dan Snyder's approach and Ron Rivera in charge of everything. Ron's not in charge of everything. Because if he was... All right. Oh, yeah, clearly. They don't make those deals because he's grasping to get wins and survive. Yeah. All right? He's not in charge. Ownership's in charge. You just saw a, a, a coach get fired who has only been there for a season and a half, not three and a half seasons, a season and a half with the identical record at three and five. So I would think Ron is the next domino. Well, we'll see. He's the next domino Certainly to Certainly won't help if they lose to New England. I, right. I, I don't have an opinion either way. I could see that scenario playing out. 
All right, let's hit the calls here. What do you think about these uh, these trades yesterday? You, do you support them? The good moves, or did you want them to hang on to you know at least one going what forward? What was the for this general year? consensus from the fan base yesterday? Where were they just well, like the diehard Chase guys? Were they just distraught? There are some. So I, I I was curious to see what the poll results would be, and it's this is two minutes in, and this is what I think the social media response was. And I've never seen more of a response on our Facebook page, yeah, on our Instagram page. Follow us there, Sports Junkies Radio. <sighs> Uh, Facebook.com slash the junks mm-hmm. on Facebook. And it's about what the poll results are. Two minutes in, 82% like the moves. All right. So there is, well, that's I think, a percentage of the fans. That's pretty small, though. Who think that they didn't get enough in return, that they thought either Montez or Chase should be retained, or that, hey, they are still in a playoff race. So don't get rid of the talent. All right. That's pretty good. Let's go to Marvin in Landover. Marvin, what's up? You're on with the junks. Hey, good morning, you guys. Hey, Marvin, um, buddy. Hey, I'm 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 really feeling good. I'm feeling good about these decisions. I'm I'm hoping that they understand they sh- should have did more. <laughs> they should have got rid of Jacoby for set. I only see like three players on this team that I probably wouldn't have listened to. I wouldn't have listened to Terry. I wouldn't have listened to John Allen. I wouldn't have listened to Cam Curl. Everybody else would have been on the table. Um, All right, but yeah, but Marvin, do you are you that desperate for a six round pick? Because that's probably what you're getting for Brissett. And Brissett might be yeah. good for Hal in the locker room and on the sidelines during right. the game. As it a might, mentor, be, yeah. might be more value for him going forward this year than trading him for a six rounder. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you right now, I'm, I'm I just I want to blow up the whole season. I just think they're going to lose a lot of these last last few games. So every draft pick is valuable. All every right. one of them helps me maybe like move up to the fourth round. I give you two six rounders. Let me move up to the fourth round to get this player That's out true. target. That's true. Everything is everything is on the table. And well, they can still do I things think- in the off season. The NFL trade deadline has become more active than it used to be in the past, but it's not like I think it's not like the NBA or other sports. Are you where not you'll trading see- picks eight years into the future? Yes. Yeah. You know. All right, let's go to Mitch in Richmond. Hey, Mitch, what's up, man? What do you think? Hey, good morning, guys. What's hey, up, buddy? Mitch? Yeah, well, the, the thing is, you know, the, the guys were probably they're due to walk. So, you know, the, the thing is, and I don't want to let Ron go or anybody go to the end of the season. I don't like firing somebody in the middle of the season. I don't see what the upside is to that. But moving to the trade, I record every game as I'm watching it. And I've been watching Chase real closely and rewinding it and going back. And he's not pursuing people after he'll, he'll make one run at it. But but if he makes a run and doesn't get him and, and sweat I know, comes he shuts over, it down. He shuts it down. He doesn't come back to help. And, and I, I don't have anything against the young man whatsoever. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes to the 49ers and lights it up. But, but, but to me, yes, you guys are right. On talent, it's a loss. But the talent wasn't producing to the level expected. Exactly. Yeah, so I don't think anybody has a true problem with moving on from guys that are part of a 29th-ranked defense in yardage and points. No. You you can, like we've said a million times, you can be the 30th or 29th-ranked defense without those guys or maybe maybe even potentially improve. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm going to b- vote they improve. Maybe I'm going to vote they maybe, improve. Maybe, but I don't think it'll be by – and it's not because Two Hill margin. and James Smith Williams are better than those guys, but that they'll play the system better. They'll do other things to help the defense. They'll blitz more. They'll do other things, and they'll play a little bit better. That's my guess. Now, it doesn't mean that the team won't implode. That there won't be. I mean, I saw social media. I mean, Camp Curl was like, "Bruh," like you know. I mean, guys, Jeremy Reeves right. was like, "What's going on?" Mm-hmm. You know, like because yeah. they know are those, are, those are they know those are two of the the best players on the defense yeah. and they're the leaders on the team and they're their buddies yeah. i i, I, I think they become a much easier defense to game plan but against. here's the problem with that thought is okay maybe the two guys play the system better but there are nine other guys on that defensive starting squad right who aren't producing really sure all right you can tell me fuller's you know having a good year but those other nine guys all right well they gotta start right. playing better well, it's, it's also a problem totally. when, when you draft your first round draft pick and you're relying on him to play and to start and yeah. now he's he's benched or he's playing in right. five snaps in a game right. in, in Emmanuel Forbes. That hurts your defense. So I understand going forward it's a good move because you're building for years to come. But for this year, if you still have hope to finish with nine wins and get that seven spot and play you know, Detroit in the first round and get to a postseason, I think it hurts you. 
All right, let's go to Ben. Uh, I think it definitely hurts. <clears throat> Again, if you're an opposing offense, you're preparing for the commanders. They're a lot easier to prepare for now. Mm -hmm. You don't have to but, really worry about the edge rushers as much. Look, and maybe the defense will play better this week against the Patriots, and the offense will stink again. I, I have no idea, but I mean, that's the way it's kind of You know what's gone. interesting? In hindsight, <clears throat> when those guys sat down, I don't know if you guys saw the video of them on Sunday or Monday after the game. I think it was Monday. I, I don't actually don't know. It might have been Sunday. They were sitting there after the game. They were taking uh, questions from reporters. It was Montez and Chase just sitting right next to them. They look like two guys that already knew they, they were knew they were going. <laughs> oh, they were checked yeah. out. Both well, of them. Well, even last week when Montez was asked, I think we played the audio of Montez last week, and, you know, he seemed resigned. Mm -hmm. Either mm -hmm. resigned or he maybe even excited because, you know, he clearly was having conversations with his agent. He knew what was up. Well, supposedly he wanted to go to Atlanta, and now he goes to Chicago, which is a poop show. Yeah. So. Yeah, but if they're going to pay him a bunch of cash and they have they have the framework of a deal, he'll go to Chicago. Are he'll they go saying with... are they saying they have a framework of a deal? Well, I mean, I would I would imagine. I thought that, that was the the, the, the uh, unspoken. Well, I don't know if it was unspoken, but if they could if they could work out an extension, they would give up the second rounder. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. that's a pretty high pick to give up a guy for. For not rental. nine yeah. games, and you know you're not and making a playoff. Like, so doesn't it doesn't make, make any yeah. sense. He must be in their future plans. Yeah, yeah. So he's they not probably a have rental something. for the Bears. The Bears aren't making any noise this, this year. <laughs> right. All right. All right, let's go to Ben, Silver Spring. Ben, what's up, man? You're on with the Junks. Greatest news. Greatest news we've had in the last uh, 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. I like it. No, it's not. It's Come not on. bigger than the ownership chain. It's not an ownership thinking with logic. And they didn't go too far. So it does another thing, too. It sends a signal to the person who may be the next GM that I'm going to get you a couple of high ground draft choices, and you're going to be able to mold this team and be able to pick coaches and be able to move players around and things like that. So you can Makes do the organization a little more attractive. You can run a business. Yeah, I agree yeah. with that. <clears throat> Makes the organization a little more attractive. And another thing I think also is this is going to be good for I'm, – I'm a Chase Young supporter, and I think this is going to be good for him because I don't really think he's got the coaching he needs here to turn him from a phenomenal athlete into an NFL end. And I'm kind of wondering if he can't get a huge contract somewhere, if it would make sense – you're going to hate this one – to convert him to a tackle. Because he over-pursues and over-pursues and over-pursues. And if you put him in the middle of the line, I think he could be quite disruptive with his strength and speed. All right. Thank you, Ben. Possible. What I, I, I got to say, I saw Lewis Riddick on ESPN say, and I don't know. There's no way I could rank defensive line coaches, but he did say that San Francisco has the best defensive line coach in the NFL. Well, they used to say that about Tom Sula. Who's the new guy now? Well, it was not Tom Sewell. Well, the defensive guy, the, the defensive line is not playing uh, like they've got the best coach in the NFL right now. That's why they went out and traded for Randy Gregory. Mm -hmm. That's why they went out and traded for Chase Young. Mm -hmm. All right, so they're not producing. They're kind of grasping. Yeah, they're, they're not. They, they I mean, Bosa help. is getting double teamed 100 you know, percent of the time. Mm -hmm. But on the other side, Cleveland Farrell, he's not getting to the quarterback. Well, he's they brought in Randy Gregory, and yeah. he's you know he's not an every down guy. I wonder but. if Greg Young has the number of the <laughs> sports talk radio station out in San Francisco. Mm. Chase's dad, mm. so we can call <laughs> them and tell them that. Uh, Chase is getting blocked, double teamed but ninety probably, percent of the time. Those are probably why he called Grant because he knew he was gone. <clears throat> right, what does he have to yeah. lose at that point? Chris Kosarek is the defensive line coach for the 49ers. He was a former DT in the NFL. Let's go to Reggie in Baltimore. Hey, Reggie. Hey, what's up, fellas? What's Thanks up, Reggie? For taking my call, man. Sure. Hey, I'm okay. I like the move, man. Uh, especially the the Demonte Sweat the second round pick is a high second round pick. I think we got nine picks now instead of seven, and uh, also we could use that pick if we need to to move up into the first round if we can see a player or target a player. We got ammunition now. The Chase Young move, I like it. I would have liked to have seen us get a, a a higher pick in the third, but I mean I'm okay with it, you know. And I'm glad that Josh Harris and, and company got involved to kind of send a message because I like I've always said, fellas, I'm not okay with Ron. Uh, drafting the players. I thought that was just a little, just, just a stretch with him drafting the players. But other than that, I'm okay with the move. Uh, I like it. We got the cap money, a little bit over $90 million, so we can go, we can grab some players in the free agency as well. Um, and uh, we'll see what happens, man. Right. And uh, 
Thank you, Reggie. Thank you, buddy. Look, look at me. Pre look appreciate at me, it. That is a part of the equation for whoever's going to take over as the next GM. <clears throat> Apparently, they are in a perfect spot salary cap wise for the off season. Ooh. Ooh. Way, yeah, they got like a hundred million. They got a hundred million to spend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, making it more attractive with the picks and the money.